Hi everybody, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Uh, some big stories in the NHL this week. Jim, let's start with the whole Mike Camilleri situation, which ended up with him changing teams. Start from the beginning and get to the end, but I mean, it's only going to take a couple of days, but <laughs> what went on there? Yeah, well, we, we, we sort of heard a little uh, Camilleri controversy, which... We were going to talk about, right. anyways, uh, you know, we definitely are now because of how things ended up, but he came out and said, you know, something about his team's loser attitude, and you, they prepare for games like losers, and it's no wonder they're losing because they're such loser faces, and <laughs> yeah. basically that, it, was, it was getting to that point, and, he, and, you know, he also made some comments about the lack of ice time he was getting at the moment, say, you know, I got I to gotta get, uh, get some work in and practice here to stay in shape, you know, because... Oh, uh, so he, he was he was getting a little punchy, but I think that's the kind of guy he is, and I, I think it was a thing that was maybe a little more overblown by the media. That's what the team's saying anyway, is that it's just kind of almost Mike being Mike or, you know, something to that effect. But, of course, the media loves that stuff, right? Oh, sure. And we, we, all, we all like to see it and talk about it. And So uh, Montreal's playing Boston this week. No Mike Camilleri uh, halfway through the game. In the third period, yeah, it doesn't come back out. Turns out he had he'd been... Uh, Sent in a cab back to the team hotel, awaiting a trade. And it, it, he ended up in Calgary. Rene Bork, some prospects, and some picks swapping sides. But basically a Bork for Camilleri, Calgary, Montreal. Crazy. Totally crazy. There's a couple of weird things about this whole story, Jim. I mean, for instance, the Camilleri loser remarks came out at, after the scrum had already done. So he'd done the scrum already. And he was talking to a, a French reporter, so it was, it was uh, completely uh, like a yeah, it was a completely French interview, which is interesting as well, because some English media is saying that there was uh, some sort of lost in translation thing going on in there. But so he does that. So first of all, he takes a side and, and does a French interview afterwards. That's weird to begin with. So when he's denying, saying, "Oh, I didn't really mean anything by it," well, why would you say it to just one reporter, you know? And then yeah, he who has ever heard about being traded? Two thirds of the way through the game. That's uh, yeah. I've never blows I've my never, mind. Yeah, I've never seen and, that. And Bork was, of course, still sitting on a suspension. Yeah, that's right. Too. At the time, so he was up in the press box, and man, yeah, that was just crazy. I, I was once once I heard um, Montreal and Calgary. I, I the Calgary game had just started, so I went and looked at who was a scratch, and I was like, well, Bork's a scratch, but he's, Suspen he's suspended. So that's and then oh, it's him. Okay, well. There you well, go. Yeah. I, I, I felt like a super sleuth. <laughs> you were all over it. <laughs> and then I, I see the, the interview. Scott Oakes got an interview on uh, Hockey Net in Canada with Camilleri as well. And Camilleri's like, oh, no, I don't think my comments in any way had to do with uh, me getting traded. And I'm going, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, yeah. Yeah, the whole story it, is just weird. Yeah, it's it's tough. to. They, they said they've been kind of working on something for a month, but... Who I don't knows, know. right? Exactly. Well, that's a, that's a deal that does add a little bit of scoring touch to the to the Flames, which is really nice. I heard a lot of stories that they'd be losing games 5-4 instead of 5-3 now, but hey, whatever. Uh, but never mind them. Let's talk a little bit about the Edmonton Oilers for a change here. Jordan Eberle, the uh, amazing sophomore playing for the Oilers right now, joined the walking wounded last weekend. Doesn't sound like he's going to be out for very long. In fact, sounds like he might be back just about time for the All-Star game. Oh yeah. well, that's very interesting. Yeah, Isn't that, for, remember, remember the the forty two point curse last year? Yes. As soon as the guy got to forty two points, he was out. Yes. He's at forty three, so it's almost like that's you know. But it doesn't sound like he'll be out for long. And in fact, as you mentioned, should be back maybe by the All Star weekend, which is kind of interesting because apparently the league came out and said to the Oilers this past week that yeah, we would have named Jordan Eberle, who's tenth in league scoring at that time. Uh, we would have named him to the All Star team. Had he been, you know, healthy, it's like, well, yeah, that's fair. But a, since when do they, since when do they do it that way? Yeah. And b, I mean, give the player his due, but also he's he's not out for two months or something like that, and you know, he's he's out for a couple of weeks. And it was the same deal with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Apparently, they said the same thing. Like it, you, he may have been in the game had he been healthy. He's another player who should be back around All-Star Weekend, but he's been named to the Rookie Skills Competition. So he's healthy enough to be named to this thing, but not to the... It's all, it's all a bit strange to me. 
Yeah, no kidding. I mean, the whole all-star thing is just, uh, it drives me nuts. I, I hate the, the fan balloting. I know they love it because they look. you look and you get like, one player gets five hundred thousand votes or whatever it is. Yeah, that, that's only for this. That's only for the for five players though. No, totally. I understand five spots. That. The NHL is the NHL is deciding who, and you know, there's bonuses involved, and yeah, it may not be a ton of money, but it's a bit of money for yeah. d- depending on the player, and it's also uh, you know a feather in your cap, you know, all star selection. It's something you can look back on, or you know, something to add to your resume, so to speak. So to get to get snubbed, which that's really what happened. He was snubbed. Uh, you know, over a two, three week knee injury. Even what they should be doing, of course, is naming him and replacing him. And I think they said, "Oh, there wouldn't be enough time to replace him." What are you talking they do about? That all the time. There's, there's a, it's a, there's a league full of, there's a league full of great hockey players. Lots of them would love to go to the All Star game, and I don't know. It just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really. It rubs me the wrong way. Absolutely. The one thing I just on the last point for me is that um, when I was reading the NHL.com uh, announcement of all of them, and I hadn't heard anything at this point, I'm going, boy, there's really no Oilers on this list. Why are there no? And then they, uh, one of the lines is, uh, and the the NHL has put the top nine scorers on this team. The NHL's top nine scorers. And I'm going, top nine. Who's t- Jordan? Eberle? Where the heck is Jordan? Eberle? Just I, it'd be it's yeah. so interesting that they name the fact that it's the top nine scorers, but yet. So, anyways, I, I'm and the, and just one more thing that, that that bugs me is it it's supposed to be and I, I remember this being a kind of a joke at some points where it's like every team has to be represented, you know, at the All Star game and you kind of laugh at the the right. brutal teams because you're like, oh, who's going to be from that team? There's five teams who won't be represented in the actual game itself. And again, who, like really, who cares about the All Star game? But it's you know, there's five teams who don't have a player. Those five, those five teams, including the others, are represented in the rookie skills competition. Yeah, whatever. But it's just, it's, it's just, I don't know what the what the NHL is really doing there. I agree. I agree. Um, while we're on the topic of the Edmonton Oilers, they're really not living up to anybody's expectations. I mean, nobody was saying that they were going to win the Stanley Cup this year or anything, Jim. But well, except for me, I, I already had. The, yeah, I've got the pretty it's, hat actually, but um, it, you know, but. Even outside of those expectations, we thought that maybe they'd be outside the play, just outside the playoff picture. You know, going for it. What is going on right now? I I think we thought they'd be battling. You know, and they'd be they'd be in there. Yeah. And they're, they're in games. They're there, but they're not. They're they're not putting a, a solid full sixty minute effort. And we see that a lot. And they, it's something they've talked about after games. You know, we play a good fifty five minutes. We let up for a you know a couple of minutes here and there, and boom, we lose. They're losing a lot of one goal games recently. They're losing a lot of well, they, you know, a five nothing loss to a team below them in the standings. Yeah, they're in twenty eighth. That's you know, hard to do. You you shouldn't you shouldn't be getting shellacked yeah. by a, a you know a, a team like that. Granted, the the Anaheim Ducks. I've always been kind of. I, I don't understand them really. They're, oh, they should be way higher in the standings. They're a, they're a team with a lot, a lot, a lot of talent. Oh, definitely. That for some reason just kind of glides through the regular season sometimes and this year especially but, but i mean you, you lose five nothing on home ice you know and you just the the effort doesn't seem to i i know it's there i mean these are these are professional athletes but the the effort doesn't look like it's at a level it should be at and injuries hurt of course yeah. um, you know they've, they've got 15 million dollars worth of defensemen on the sidelines ryan whitney's Really struggled with injury, you know. They've got the, uh, well, the Nuge and Everly, your your all stars there. They're both hurt, and they'll be back. And you know, Gilbert will be back at the end of the month too, probably. But man, it, it you know it, it seems like when it rains, it pours for the Edmonton Oilers injury wise. But you just you need a better effort, and I don't know I don't know what it is that they that they're not doing to get. Uh, Tom Rennie always talks about being getting that emotional attachment to a game. And they just they just don't seem to do it. He was livid he was after I lost to the Ducks, you know. And he was mad. I just I I don't understand. I don't know what, what I don't know what they're doing out there. Totally, and I don't know what Rennie can do. Uh, a lot of media reports right now about uh, the fact that Rennie and uh, and uh, the GM Tamalini don't have contract extensions past this year, and like it's either of their fault. I don't know. I, it'd be nice yeah. to see. It'd be nice to see something out. But is it time? Jim, that we have to start talking about a high draft pick yet again for the third year in a row, uh, or is there still something they can make of this season? 
It really would be a shame if, you know, halfway through the season, you just kind of put up the close sign and wait for September. But unless they turn things around here, I, mean, I, I, I really, if they play like they did or if they play like they have been lately, it's maybe we're looking at Niall Yakupov or whoever. But they they have they have I think about four wins since late November. That's right. That's right. It's, it's mid January right now. Like you, it's it's really it's really getting old. This whole being a brutal hockey team. Agreed. You know, the, there's you, you wait for the turn the turning point, but it's I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe at the trade deadline here they they address some needs and make a push. I'm not sure, but man. It's just it's frustrating. I can see I can see it. I mean, you're, you're it really feeling, is. I'm feeling it too. It's just, I don't know what it is, but you know it, it's bad. We're gonna move on a little bit because we're on a little bit of a low and go to 15 minutes of fame's 15 minutes of fame's favorite boxing uh, topic here, folks. Uh, we've kept an eye on the whole Mayweather Pacquiao thing for a while now. The latest thing has Floyd Mayweather Jr. getting his jail sentence pushed back so that he can fight May 5th, and then of course he calls out. Uh, Manny Pacquiao to the to agree with the fight, but then Pacquiao saying, you know, uh, no, I don't think so. We'll see how it goes. What's going on there? Well, we talked about this before months yeah. ago, where he booked a venue on May fifth without an opponent and didn't say anything about it and didn't say anything about it, and now in January, which is a couple of months before May, yeah. he's saying. Hey, come on, step up, punk. Come yeah. fight me on May 5th. I have my jail sentence pushed back. Oh, yeah, your jail sentence for domestic something or other. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. good. Um, but for one, that's a fight. That, that's the, the biggest fight in boxing right now for, for years. For years, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to shop that around? Yeah. You could have you, oh my, the money you could make off that fight, and you've already booked a venue, and now you're... This is something that could have been talked about months ago, and it wasn't. And totally. now he's saying, oh, punk this, punk that. Come on, man. And I, the one thing I saw Pacquiao said, he'll fight if Mayweather accepts a 50-50 split of the purse. And I don't know if that's just the tactic on his side to slow it down or what. But, man, I, this, this situation, it's, it's almost so, ba- so bad that... I shouldn't really, really want to see the fight anymore. Well, exactly. I don't know what it is that maybe these guys don't want to hit each other or get they get hit, but these guys are guys who get hit for a living, and uh, you know you can make a lot of money with this fight. Just fight already. But I'm I'm uh, I'm getting done at this point. Really, uh, we're gonna bring it up a hundred more times. I'm sure because yeah. it's a good story. But I'm getting sick and tired of it right now. Uh, your yes or no? Is it going to happen? No. Ah, there you go. I like it. I don't think so. No, not not no. May fifth. Maybe exactly. Mm, Maybe later on down. We're going to move on to the Gabbies now. These are good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst of the world of sport, and we uh, try to make fun of it a little bit. Let's give a good to Barcelona's Leo Messi, because he is once again the FIFA Player of the Year. That's three straight for the 24-year-old. The first guy ever to do the three-peat, Jim. He helped his club win five trophies last year, including the Champions League and Spanish League titles. No big deal. He, yeah, no, just no, no big deal. This guy is, is the absolutely a big deal. How about a good to uh, Tim Tebow? Yes, he uh, he. Did you just Tebow? I Tebowed. And a boy, he earned an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars for uh, that overtime win over the Steelers in Week One of the playoffs. That eighty-yard touchdown pass apparently led to over ninety-four hundred tweets per second, oh, Jeff. Because apparently that's how we measure human achievement <laughs> now. Um, unfortunately, Tebow time is up. Thanks yeah. to Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> what I liked about that was, uh, um, you know, it was uh, about like right at the beginning of overtime, and the argument was that uh, we didn't think he was going to throw, and they covered the run. And uh, yeah. eighty yards later, good yeah. night. I loved about that. Anyways, uh, back to the soccer for the final good this week. This is also going to be a good to me if I can pronounce this name. Jim likes okay. to give me the great names to to pronounce here. Uh, how about Arsenal's Thierry Henry? That's Atta my boy. French right there. He spent the season with uh, the New York Red Bulls of the MLS, but is back on loan with his old club. First game back, 10 minutes after coming on as a sub, scores a beauty for a 1 nothing win. 1 nil win, excuse me, win in FA Cup no. action. Atta boy. Good for you, Henri. Storybook stuff there. Absolutely Storybook stuff. Uh, let's give a bad to New York Islanders goalie Rick oh, DiPietro. Yes. Poor guy. Yeah. We talked about him a lot, but this really is 
terrible news. He's he's uh, we we mentioned a lower body injury while he's already on the injured reserve. Yeah. Sports hernia surgery likely done for the season. That'll mean forty seven games over four years with nine years left on that humongous contract. He just you know he just wants to play hockey, yeah, he does but he too. just cannot. He said I'm practically bionic now. And you can't blame the guy. There is it's not his fault. You just blame the situation and make fun of the situation. It's, yeah. it's too bad for him. All you can do is smile, I exactly. guess. Exactly. How about pro bowler Josh Blanchard? He's rehabbing a bit of a bruised ego at the moment after taking a spill at a world championship qualifier in las vegas this is something that you might see at your local lanes ladies and gentlemen but definitely not at a, at a world championship he walked up forgot to release the ball slipped on the lane and landed in the gutter and on youtube boy that sucks too bad for uh, for mr blanchard yeah it's quite a quite a pleasure to watch <laughs> that's but. right <laughs> The only time bowling is, like, watch-worthy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, finally, a bad to the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Shahid Khan. He recently came out and said, For me, a fan is somebody who is a season ticket holder for the Jaguars. So that's a key definition. <laughs> need to get out. Okay. okay. Uh, tech PR staff went into a frenzy, went into full that. PR mode after that, that, and said, Oh, no, a fan is just somebody who loves the team. And, you know, we like all ticket holders and non-ticket holders and... But come on, man! What are you thinking? I like that. How about a winning season? Yeah, how about that? Yeah, give, us that. Winning, give us a winning season. We'll become fads and maybe even get a, a season ticket or two out of boy. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna move on to the punchline now. This week's punchline is one of my favorites, probably of the year. Former Oiler uh, and the Walking Fridge, Justin Penner. He says his, he hurt his back recently, Jim. Eating pancakes. Yeah, you know, he, he's, he's actually, in, in Dustin Penner-like fashion, come yes. out to clarify that they were vegetarian pancakes, <laughs> and it, it didn't happen mid-bite, no. uh, and, and he did finish them. Yes. Good. Uh, but he, he also says he's hoping to get a, an endorsement deal with IHOP or Denny's out of it, which would be nice. Yes. Um, and he'll be hosting an event called Pancakes with Penner to raise money for charity. Uh, you know, you, you, he's, he's, a, he's a different breed of guy. Like, he's... He's always a little bit interesting. And right. very, he, if, if, I think a lot of people don't get his sense of humor because he's, he's got a pretty dry sense of humor. Very dry. But <laughs> good on him for addressing it, you know? What I loved about that, that is... That story came out, I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh, oh Dustin, why? Um, and uh, what I love is that he said uh, his quote was something like, sitting down to my wife's delicious pancakes. And that's that's, a, that's what makes it right there. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. The and delicious he, you know, the, he, he said something else about, yeah, there's not a lot of transparency about injuries. I know people complain about that. So I just wanted to be transparent about it. Good for him. Although I saw him play in Cal against Calgary uh, Saturday night, looked great. Actually, looked like he wanted to, to come back. Uh, you know, come back strong. So good for him. Uh, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's our 15 minutes of fame up for this week. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll, and I'm Jim Kerr. Have a good week, folks.